Hey guys, welcome to yet another installment of the Virtus Performance Podcast. Before I start talking about today's episode, if you could stop what you're doing, uh, grab your phone. If you're driving, please pull over. Uh, Scroll down a little bit, jump into that little share button and give us a share. Uh, Send it to someone you feel as though might benefit from the conversation. If you're not sure on anyone, chuck it on your socials, I guess, our intention or my intention for this podcast is for it to impact as many people as possible uh, in as deep as way, a way as possible um, so that we can make a change in either the way people are thinking or the way people are looking after themselves or, or how people are actually um, serving themselves or serving others or the way they're spending their day. So If you can share it, that would be excellent. Um, Some of you would know, uh, some of you wouldn't, but we are now on Spotify. Uh, So whether you have an Android phone or a Apple phone, um, we can now jump, or all of you can now jump on Spotify to listen to the episodes. Um, So we're already on Podbean and iTunes, as most of you guys should know. Uh, The audio is also up on YouTube. So um, we've got a few few more places you guys can listen to the podcast and a few different ways we can share it. So today's episode, I sat down with uh, Tommy T and Simon Cooper, two of my favorite humans in the world. Um, We did an episode like this uh, maybe 20, 20 to 30 weeks ago, um, 15 minute thoughts. So what we did is we, we all came loaded with a couple of different topics. Uh, We chucked them in a beanie, in a hat, and uh, we picked them out one at a time and spent 15 minutes discussing it. So uh, because we talked for a while, um, we've split it into two weeks worth of episodes. Uh, So this week, week one, uh, we'll get stuck straight in and and we'll start talking about things. And uh, if you have any suggestions um, or thoughts of your own, either on the topics or future topics or future podcasts, or if you have uh, certain people that you would feel would be able to add value as guests, please send me a message um, either through Instagram, uh, the Virtus Podcast, or at the Excellence the Excellence Coach, um, or send me an email, Lachlan Wallace at VirtusPerformance.com. And yeah, we can start adding some, some more value um, and talking to different people. Here we go. My personal and business goal is to be just a little bit better every day. I believe everyone, especially normal people, have a story to tell. The Virtus Podcast exists to help us all find small ways of consistent improvement by discussing the journey and experiences of each of our guests. That's you. <laughs> we got that bit cute. Good. You absolute pretzel. Hey guys, welcome to another week of the Virtus Podcast. So, plan for today is we've got another one of our 15 minute thoughts with the great man Thomas Turlak and the mediocre man Simon Not Cooper. Man. <laughs> um, so, what we've, what we've done for today is we've each put two topics into a hat, a beanie. Uh, Virtus beanie. A Virtus beanie. With the pom pom, because it's not a beanie if it doesn't have a pom pom. They're still available. They are still available. Nineteen ninety nine, in store only. Uh, so I'll pick out a topic, we'll read it out, and then whoever threw that topic into the ring uh, will kind of bring up the subject, and then we'll spend fifteen minutes talking about it. At the end of the, uh, the end of the fifteen minutes, you'll hear a, you hear a bit of a quack. That's a. Uh, Samuel L. Quaxton, the duck, just letting us know that it's time to move on. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this episode, please let us know, and we'll keep talking rubbish. So, first topic. That's mine. <coughs> so, my topic, universal basic income. Ooh. Discuss. So, I 
I think universal basic income is one of those topics that I know very little about. And I, I intentionally kind of haven't really dove into it and seen what it, what I guess economists think of it and what um, the people that will actually make the decisions think of it. But more so from a uh, from a goal orientated, uh, mission orientated, purpose orientated view, I've tried to look at it as how can we create a society going forward where more people are driven and happier and um, more joyous and there's always going to be pain suffering all that shit we know that but right now we're kind of in a stage where we got like highest depression rates ever highest anxiety rates um, we're also working more we're spending more time at work more time away from friends and family and things like that so universal basic income is one of those topics where it really interests me as to whether it could work and if it could work, how could it, how would it look, and why would we actually go about diving into it? Mm. Yeah. Thoughts? I haven't really done a lot of research on it either, and the only real exposure I've had to it, I think, is through other podcasts and discussions like this. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think it would be very interesting to see the if, the long term effects that it would have on society and and communities. They did. I think they tried it. Well, they trialed it in. Was it Switzerland or Sweden, somewhere in Europe? And they, I think they did it for a while, but then they decided to go back or get uh, eliminated again. And I'm gonna have to have a look and see what exactly if the effects were. But it makes sense that everyone, if everyone has a basic income yep. that looks after all your essential needs yeah like I mean, food, roof over your head food exactly. sh- like shelter if you tick those boxes then then mm. it raises an interesting um, issue of whether people will continue to work uh, mm. and, and the overall sort of happiness of a society yeah what do you think like not being someone driven by money as a motivator, yeah, it's interesting because I think I would be fine with it if I could find value and not a monetary solution, but like some other benefit or I don't know reward in some way, like some kind of, some kind of payoff for yeah. your and it's only basic, benefit. right? It's not like it's not paying yeah. <clears throat> paying for holidays and an yeah. extra car and all that. Totally, and we all like those kind of things. So I'm trying to think, like. I'm not incentivized by money, but mm. money unlocks sometimes those things that you do like, so holidays and those kind of things. Um, I, I think the, um, the the trial in Europe, wherever it was, the amount that actually that everyone received was something equivalent to fifteen thousand US dollars. For a year, yeah. So Over the, as a yearly income, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So covers covers costs. Yeah, like we're not talking. We're looking, we're looking at very very minimal. Mm. I don't know disposable income yeah. after that. So, mm. so what was the what's the the premise? Is that do you have the ability to earn more and <coughs> do more? Well, well, so, of so kind of my reason for thinking it would be a good idea is because rather than spending, you know, we got one hundred sixty eight hours in a week. We're going to we can most people work forty to seventy of those. Rather than spending those. S- first 20 or 30 of those hours just allowing us to do that every week we're spending the first 20 or 30 hours moving towards what we want to do so whether it's um chasing like chasing a dream whether like uh for example athletes um chasing something that doesn't necessarily get them paid short term or long term or whether it's someone's like someone with a small family actually taking the plunge and and diving into a business like starting a business or or creating a job they love rather than staying in a job they dislike because Mm. of the monetary constraints Mm. and I think like when I started Virtus and started the business we were in a very fortunate position where I had like I was living at home um, there wasn't a heap of risks like I was responsible for myself yeah I had a partner in KP but she was working so there were like a lot of the the risks were kind of covered yeah. Um, and I think something like universal basic income it allows people to chase the things that they love to do and if they don't know it allows them that 
a little bit of leg rope to explore what they're doing mm -hmm. every day. Um, because I think there's definitely a, a part of happiness um, that comes from those creation of good habits around work. Yeah. But it stops work from having to just like having it to think about work as a negative all the time because yeah. it automatically turns into what do you want to spend your day doing? Yeah. Um, Devil's advocate. Sorry, man. Devil's advocate though. So like I agree, athletes should have the chance and let's use that because it kind of ties into Virtus. Yeah. But devil's advocate, you become a professional athlete. How does that help the wider community that supported you? Necessarily, like yeah, it's a jerk thing to say. No, no, but, but it's but it's true. Like right? I think I, I can totally see that if it's if it has an end goal that does bring back to the community and does something yeah. like it's, we're talking very socialist and communist kind of style thinking, but yeah. like that there has to be some kind of exchange for this. It can't just be I want to be looked after so I can do something yeah. that's just helped me. Like how how many people get pleasure on the weekends watching Dangerfield? Like totally run through fifty, like. and that's why there's there's money involved in that. Yeah. Totally. So like, yes, you're totally right. But what's to say that someone wants to go and do, I don't know, like a really obscure sport that <laughs> no one's ever going to want to watch, but they love it, enjoy it, and they're yeah. great at yeah. it. But do you know what I mean? There, yeah. There's a reason that there's markets for football and 100%. for certain sports because people do want to watch it and yeah. are willing to. Companies are willing to pay sponsorship yeah. to get their name in front of it because there's eyes watching it, and that's. There's an ecosystem that exists for that exact reason. If you're good enough, like look at the NBA, those kind of people are paid way more. People would say too much. Stupid money, yeah. But people are willing to watch it. Companies are willing to pay it. Yeah, so it's not too much. Like it yeah. is, it's only worth what people are willing to pay and people are willing to pay it. So you can whinge and moan that they get overpaid to be an athlete, but they've earned it by being valuable enough and people want to watch mm. them so much. Yeah, and I think, I think a percentage of the population... Um, like Coop said before people not wanting to work a percentage of the population are probably always going to go like skate by by doing the bare minimum yeah um, I guess that's like human nature or some people's human nature to a point and you're not necessarily going to change how people behave but what you're going to do is open the door for that I guess lower income earner that isn't able, able to afford to take a plunge into something they yeah. love doing and yeah. like I, like I love rocking up to work every day because it's it helps fuel my passion and my drive and and yes I'm giving back to the community and this will tie nice into it, my next topic but I'm actually I feel really good when I give back to the community yeah. and I think if it opens the doors for more people to chase those things um, then it's it's a positive it's a positive yeah, thing. We're talking about safety net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. safety net. No, really like I said, people are working and doing things that fulfill them, which that will then contribute to their overall happiness, which contributes to an overall um, better society. Mm. Yeah. Um, would you would you two, like, probably not two great examples, but would you guys change what you're doing if you had an extra 200 bucks a week to spend on rent and food and things like that? Like, would you change the way you spend your days? No. <laughs> would it probably not alleviate not, certain, things, certain stresses? Definitely. It would, it would mean that I'm... Like there is always an element of you're working to pay the bills and to save money for future things, I yep. suppose. But it turns it into you're you're working to to strive towards your higher purpose or to achieve a vision, whether yep. it's yours or I suppose someone else's. There's always yep. going to be employees. Not everyone can be a business owner, and not everyone wants to either. No, and yeah. don't talk. you don't need to be your own uh, your own boss to feel fulfilled in, yeah. in your work. Mm. Uh, but <clears throat> what's my train of thought? For me, like the extra two hundred bucks is great now. Ten years from now, if I'm still only earning an extra two hundred bucks and there's no growth, like yeah, it's really hard to motivate. Like as much as I'm not driven by money, I'm driven by the security and the potential for things in the future like it's yeah. not there's no I need to earn this much money but I'd like to be in a position to earn more to do more things mm -hmm. to have a house to have security yeah. and then retire and those kind of things we're all looking mm -hmm. towards those and we're working and building and growing if you're not slowly climbing the ladder whichever ladder that's success money whatever yeah. but that constant improvement and getting better and building on what came before mm -hmm. I just don't think there's that incentive if everyone's just like 
and I don't understand this this concept 100 percent but if it was a safety net but you had the ability to earn above and beyond if you desire I think that's a great thing but if if it limits how much you can grow and do yeah I think it kind of could stunt some people they go well what's the point of burning myself out and doing things as much as you would otherwise like I think yeah. people would still grow and do stuff but not at the capacity we currently do where the rewards are so much better if you do yeah. hustle really hard like if you go at 100% capacity and try and grow your business or improve what you're doing you're going to see way better results than if you go eh, I'm not going to get rewarded financially or in any other way yeah. I'll, I'll go at 70% why wouldn't I just take a back seat because yeah there's no reward. There needs to be a carrot dangling somehow. Yeah. And I think that's... Yeah. Mot- motivation's an interesting one. Like, what motivates one person is going to be completely different to another. Exactly. Whether it's, uh, like, extrinsic, as in you get cash or um, a pay rise or... A, a pat on the back. and Yeah. So there's things that are, like, external to you. Or there's intrinsic motivators, which are, I want to feel fulfilled, I want to achieve, I want to help people. Mm. Uh, And they're two completely separate things, and I think they elicit different responses in people. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess it's, I kind of look at it as like, uh, and I'm working on this analogy because I thought of it about 18 seconds ago, but life's like a set of stairs, right? This doesn't necessarily help you get to stair number 10 or stair number 100 but what it does is it gets you off the ground and it gets mm. you it gives you that kind of kick start or push start or things yeah, like you're that you're on step 15 so if there's a flood you're not <clears> taken <throat> away you're yeah. safe you're above water yeah <laughs> there you go we're working on the analogy you did it good, good work team yeah <laughs> good. and, and yeah. I think the people that are going to dive in and, and load up on building a business or building a brand or or you know jump into community service or chase a sport they love are still going to do it. Like it's not going to change human psychology, but what it does is it alleviates some of those stresses. And will it make everyone like if say we add twenty percent to everyone's income as a base level to pay for everything? Mm. Will it drop everyone's productivity twenty percent? Some people maybe, some people mm. maybe not. Like yeah. I think, and obviously that struggle and that um, that anxiety and stress around like finances is a good thing. Yeah. If you look at like you can look at it as a good thing because it will it gives you a kick up the ass to get all that stuff in check. Like yeah. mm-hmm. when I got a bill and I'm like, holy shit, how am I going to pay this? Then for the next couple of weeks, I'm pretty anal with my savings. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I guess maybe it will help with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's it's an area where most of us, yeah, only with most of us, and me as a business owner, like I'm pretty illiterate when it comes to finances and savings and things like that. Like. Um, so I think it's an area where if if it comes with a certain level of education maybe or maybe there's certain requirements I don't know yeah. um, I, I kind of like the models of instead of a monetary value like which I don't think this is but like you make things like education free you make yeah those kind of things you incentivize yeah. higher learning and bettering yourself yeah. and make them free and remove the barriers from those yeah. things 100% I, I think, think that's a that, no brainer I think those spends of like government funds and could be a better oh, way to distribute if you, have, if you have no barriers to improving yourself like I've, I honestly feel like you cannot not get better humans out of that process yeah yeah because then like, you're actually fueling people's desire you've got, you've got no learn. excuse like <clears throat> it's quite easy to go and this is kind of back to the problem is like everyone goes oh it's too hard to start my own business or anything but if yeah. there's no barrier to you yeah. doing that or if we said okay everyone is entitled to a, a 10 grand like boost to start a business something yeah. like that obviously a lot of caveats and stuff but yeah here's, here's let's, let's like, look at how we can leg, and, yeah. give people a leg up yeah as opposed to go, not nah, everything's really too hard, and and just chuck them the money. Yeah, because even though they're getting their, yeah. Yeah. this this income for their basic needs, there's nothing that's res- that's stopping them from spending that money. Uh, However, they want. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah, well, that's true. Whereas incentivizing on. education or starting a business mm, or yeah. those kind of things, that could be a really good spend of that. That yeah, same money, and like that that word you said, entitlement. Like that's a dangerous, dangerous kind of road to start driving down because as soon as you throw in like because people 
are naturally becoming more entitled because they see other people achieving and having things and they feel as though they deserve it too without actually doing the work. So I guess the incentivizing the income, uh, the um, incentivizing more education and learning and starting businesses and stuff, people have to do the work before they get it. Yeah, it's probably the ownership you're, back you're, on that person yeah. to grow themselves. You're empowering these people to achieve whatever they want to. Good. Next topic. 15 nice. that was about that was <laughs> What is your favorite, most effective method of learning? Ooh, this is me. So I think we feel like we've spoken about this a couple of times in previous podcasts and it kind of comes up a bit about, especially in the in this circle where we are all motivated to learn and grow and better ourselves. But what are, what are your favorite ways to learn, to consume information, to practice that? to put it into um, put it into practice I think like for me it's I kind of try and look at it as like three different parts there's the there's the consuming the information part then there's the absorbing the information part and then there's the acting upon the information so um, depending on what I want need the information for or what purpose it serves will determine how I learn best I think um, like obviously there's the there's all the different learning styles. So some people learn physi- physically, some people learn um, kinesthetically. Oh, well, that's that's physically. Some people learn verbally um, by talking and explaining and teaching. Some people learn by listening. Some people learn by seeing. So obviously we all learn differently. But I tend to find that I learn best by listening and conversing. So like a conversation like this mm-hmm. or I'll listen to a podcast and then have a conversation about the topics on that podcast. Mm. Um, but I guess... For me, I'm not the kind of person that can just listen to something and then learn it. And I have to apply it first, mm-hmm. otherwise I forget. Like it's one of those thousand ideas I have in my head that I forget about. Um, mm. So I think yeah. finding believable, reliable sources like, I guess, business owners or people that have walked the walk and now are yep. talking the talk, learning from them, that's probably my number one way to, to learn. Mm. Cool. I'd add an extra step in at the end as well. When you said you consume, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, when you consume information, you absorb it. Yeah. And then you put it into practice. Yep. And then also there's what you learn from that, the lessons that you get from putting it into practice and the what can you take from this application and how can yeah. I do better next time. Yeah. And I think the ability to teach, then teach, on teach that to someone else yeah. is probably like you ra- if you want to round it out um, mm. it's, it's uh-huh. something I've like doing some teaching it's really yeah, uh, reinforces reinforce how yeah. fucking important it is to be able to teach it like mm. like pick one of the basic concepts you think you know and mm. teach it to someone and you should be able to teach it to anyone on the street mm. like I'm sure Einstein could have explained relativity to me even though I'm an idiot it's debatable it's a relative I guess I don't think like I agree with a lot of what you're saying and I'm probably very similar I think I would describe it as <clears throat> maybe looking at businesses or things friends are going through or other people and looking at that as like a case study yep. and going what can I learn from that what can I yeah. talk to them about so talking to you about Virtus with you two things like that um, different but it applies like we've talked many times about how common folk and Third, it's a similar but so different at the same time. Like yeah. you're still working with people, you're still working with, with relationships yeah. and a lot of the problems I think that keep going up with all the businesses that I've been involved is communication. So a lot of that is learning how to communicate better, how to do those kind of things. So yeah. like it be it selling a service which is the gym or selling a product which is coffee, like it's it's still communication and how do we do that effectively and um so I would say like looking at situations or issues or problems that have arisen in another company or with friends or however, yeah. looking at that, what could have been done better? How could I do that? And then applying that mm. and then making mistakes. Like the best yeah. way that I've learned is doing it the wrong way yeah. um, and going, that sucked. <laughs> yeah. um, but let's, no... let's try that a different way. And yeah. you don't know the next way is going to be better, but it can't, it's not going to be bad again. Like, Well, well like here's the one thing like that I do know is I don't have a fucking clue what I'm doing <laughs> like I am using all of the information that I currently have available to me and all of the experiences that I've had mm-hmm. and the experiences that I've been lucky enough to either share or learn from like you guys and 
and the other people in our circles and like every day I'm still feeling I still have the feeling like I'm just starting like it's yeah. like um, we're always learning something new yeah based on like your your, previous but then you're like, <clears throat> like imposter syndrome yeah I've like genuinely yeah some, some days sometimes yeah some days it's like like I when I can think critically and kind of sit there I go well yes I know I'm very very good at what I do like I'm mm-hmm. at like take the stairs from before I'm still at step I feel as though I'm still at step one yeah um, but some days I'm just like well what am, like what am I doing well I don't deserve to be in this position like yeah. I shouldn't be um, I shouldn't be find me out teaching yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then it's just like well like I am the authority for health and fitness in a lot of people's lives so mm-hmm. um, I guess I I have like I'm not entitled to it but I do deserve to have that because I've put in yep. the work and, and, and the runs are on the board but it's really easy to tell yourself mm-hmm. um that you don't and I guess it's like it almost feels as though everything that's happened before here just brings you to here and you're starting at square one yeah. every day yeah. um, you always feel like it's a fresh start like, yeah. even no matter how much history you have like I have the same thing like I logically and categorically know that I'm a good coffee roaster but you still have those days you're like I don't know and then someone's like wow that was an excellent coffee like oh phew like they didn't catch me got away with it again <laughs> got away. Yeah. and that's what it feels like sometimes 4,000 coffees like, later yeah I'm going to roll with 4,000 good coffees Roast. but next one might be shit yeah exactly you've roasted tons and tons and tons of coffee like I have and you still are guessing you're like man oh. am, am I really good at this like I don't know yeah and if- it's it keeps you going in some ways, but sometimes it can be tiring. Yeah. Um, what if that comes back to remembering where you were when you first started doing what you were yeah. doing? Mm-hmm. You're remembering the feeling of uncertainty and mm. uh, and knowing that you there's still so much to learn, yeah. and you still may, you still retain that sort of feeling. Yeah. Because everything that you've learned up to now, you're building on. So there's always so much to learn. You're still mm. building on your previous knowledge yeah yeah um, yeah, and, and it's that pursuit of of excellence and pursuit of perfection I think we take for granted what we've already learned and you're like yeah but I've learned that so it's fine like it <laughs> just gets discounted as like yeah. yeah not useless but it's like yeah but I know that now so it's I don't know we just kind of <laughs> completely discount What's all next? this stuff that we've learned yeah, it's like exactly. I need to learn the next thing yeah yeah, yeah. and then it's like right like <clears throat> we're probably going to get more bang for our buck by adding to that knowledge and yeah. um, and like transcending that that level of understanding on a certain thing rather than putting that aside and going to something else, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like let's use gym example because it's an easy one. If I'm teaching someone how to squat, every single time I've taught someone to squat over the last eight or nine years of being in the industry and doing it myself, I've learned a little bit each time that will help me teach this next squat. Yeah. But we're still presented with problems and difficulties that, this person is going to probably move different to 98% of those people Mm -hmm. and you've got to somehow find in your brain that right cure, that right, um, the right thing to, to teach them to actually help them Mm -hmm. complete Mm -hmm. a squat properly. Um, and if, and in a really simple, this is a squat example, that's easy, but then when it's in a, you know, I've got to run my life example with, <laughs> with business, you know, with business yeah. work, relationships, yeah. you know, communication, all, all of those kind of things. It's just like, yeah. it's really easy to get overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the more you learn, the more you encounter challenges and then you've got to learn to overcome those challenges and that presents with new ones. Yeah. So it's just continuously, yeah. it's that continual process. And it's, the, it's the, that frustrating thing about, frustrating, but also kind of the, one of the meanings of life is that we can every time like things don't get easier things never get easier like life will always yeah. be hard and always be difficult there's always a struggle we just get better at dealing with it yes. mm-hmm. but as we get better the problems get harder yeah and it's yeah. it's like sometimes if you get yourself into a negative mindset which I'm usually pretty good at not being in but the last couple of weeks I've been kind of a little down on myself in certain areas it's been me not appreciating that these issues that I'm being dealt with is just the world of the universe's way of challenging me to um, transcend where I was yesterday. Yeah. Write that down. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And I think when, when I am aware of that, like awareness is one thing, but then actually believing it's another. Yeah. Um, I found, myself, found myself doubting that I believe it for mm. you know, the first time in a, in a while. And I guess it's in a weird way, 
Um, like if you told me three years ago that I am where I am now, I would have been fucking stoked. I'd be like, yeah, that's amazing. But now that I'm here, I'm just like, I don't know what I want next or, or next, but I don't know what to do to make this better or make, yeah. make mm-hmm. this improve. So that doubt starts mm-hmm. starts coming in. Yeah. Um, How have you overcome that doubt in the past? Just do shit. <laughs> and hope stuff. it works, yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's just, that's failing and that's how you learn. Yeah. You do something, you see what went right, what went wrong. Yeah. You and take I, what went right, you distill it to something that you can apply again. <coughs> take what yeah. went wrong, you... Yeah either fix it or you learn how to overcome that and I probably need to be more aware to actually make that happen and make those decisions like execute on those decisions because I think like I was talking about before when I started it was it was easy because there was no real risks like yeah. now like You've invested you know, in it and invested in it there's time involved. there's people involved so yeah. like when every decision I make is made not just for me but KP and I and then for staff. You know, our 12 staff and then you know our all our clients and the community so every decision affects it doesn't just affect me anymore yeah. um, which is a really cool responsibility to have but it's also a really fucking scary responsibility yeah. to have yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I don't want to fuck it up but at the same time I don't want to be where we are now in a year yeah it was really interesting talking to Sammy and Ben yesterday about something but yeah. we talked about how Common folks now at a stage that if something happened, we don't have far to fall because of how well we've built the business. Mm. Yeah, I think like you need to understand Virtus is in a similar spot. Like, mm. if something falls down, there's such a good structure and things there. It's not going to fall far. It's not going to plummet to zero again. It's going to drop a bit, but yeah. it's going to drop back to a manageable spot. Like you are mm. in a comfortable position to take risks without plummeting to death. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, well, and, and that's really, such it, a good, it, strong foundation. It feels of like feels like if we fuck up, then we could plummet to death. Yeah, and I think you need to like have a look. I think you're in a really Probably strong won't. position, mm. yeah. and that uh, you you've you've I guess clipped on. You're rock climbing. You've clipped on. You're <laughs> yeah. in a secure spot. Yeah, you, you feel like you're free climbing. You're gonna plummet to your death, but you're not. You've got all these little spots that you've clipped in. Good and analogy. Good. Oh, like don't have far to fall. Like, you should don't be confident in that. Like you yeah. should be taking the risks yeah. to grow that. And know that you're going to drop back down to a little bit. Mm. You're not going to fall all the way down. It's having that reflection of looking back down the cliff, learning how you've overcome yeah. similar things in the past. Yeah. Uh, and then, again, apply it and keep moving forward. Yeah. Keep moving up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What was the question? It was what are we, how do we learn best? Yeah, we kind of uh, deviated a bit from the question. But mm. what is your best or what is your favorite or most effective way to learn? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you kind of need that um, understanding of how you learn, but then you need feed, like feedback. Mm-hmm. There you go. There's my answer. Feedback. Mm, it's it's true. It's ne- but it's ne- it's positive not, or negative uh, feedback. Well, I think it's honest. I think it's gonna be honest yeah. feedback. Um, you don't want to be pumped what's, what's up for something that you're not doing. Disconcerting well, information. Like that's <laughs> disconfirming. Disconfirming. That's yeah. what like that's what you need. But it's here's the thing. Like everyone's got an opinion, and most people's opinions suck because they got no fucking clue what they're talking about. Oh, like <laughs> like like me for um, basic income, right? Like it's 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 something that I'm interested in, mm-hmm. but and I've got an opinion that's you know ten percent developed, mm-hmm. but I got no idea what I'm talking about. And I think too many of us take the opinions of others as gospel yeah, without yeah. them being like believable opinions yeah. like to touch on a book that I haven't talked about at all principles like he talks about believability oh, weighted yeah, uh, we, we, principles good book right. Read it. Um, believability weighted decisions so it's like it's, a, it's an idea meritocracy so yeah. the best idea always wins but for example um, if I <clears throat> take feedback from Coop that's going to be weighted significantly more than someone that's been in the gym once yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's it's really easy yeah, to credibility behind yeah the things to take so take important. someone's opinion as gospel, but we've just got to be like, okay, well, this person doesn't understand ninety eight percent of what what's happening. Yeah. And like, it depends on what they're talking about as well. Mm. Like specifically, mm. like yeah, talk to you and Coop on running a gym and exercise and sports science, those yeah. kind of things. Yeah. Way more than talking to <laughs> Sammy Keck about that because he's got no problem <laughs> and the guy can't lift a trap bar properly. So but, you know, like, but he's, oh, the, but oh, he's the kind of person that's like super confident and super... So, but so his he, charismatic yeah. style of yeah, communicating yeah. to you, he could sell you very quickly. Yeah. So that's the yeah. thing. You need to like weigh up that credibility. Yeah. If you want to know about broccoli lattes, go talk to... He's your guy, broccoli. <laughs> a good um, exercise that I just came across 
from uh, to finish on uh, from Logan Gil- Gilbrick from Logan Gilbrick. Uh, Deuce Gym in the US but he he gave an example or an exercise to do where you write down something that you know something that you're sure of so for example I know that this is the best way to achieve this and then try and prove it wrong yourself yeah good so write down something mm. that you know is an absolute truth and then prove yourself wrong and that's a great way to learn and to poke holes at something and see where it might fall short and how you can overcome mm-hmm. or, or fill in those holes that's good I like that a lot I really like it <laughs> oh god <laughs> the silence is deafening <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. Why is silence deafening? <coughs> uh, so this is Tommy's. <coughs> Good. Time is more valuable than money. Explain. So mm. this this is a big one for me. I don't have a lot of money. I don't earn a lot of money. But I feel like I'm richer in many other ways with spending my time with people and also then using my time as a currency and giving that to someone, whether it be in a work capacity, in so like donating my time in exchange for something, or yeah. giving that to someone like as a valuable asset. So spending time with friends and family mm-hmm. should be seen as value. Um, your time is so much more valuable. It's it seems like you've got an infinite amount, but it's far yeah. far less than you you think. Um, and it goes so much quicker than you think. Go, it goes so much more quicker. Than, and like to think about time in that kind of currency. Yeah. Like you talk, you guys talk about the 168 hours, which is a really great way to look at it. Um, but maybe looking at it as a currency and like how would you spend $168? Like is another way to kind of think yeah. about it. Like what value are you putting on something? Because I don't know, if you, you start thinking about an hour's worth of time, put a price on it nominal price Mm. is it worth you doing that or is the value of you doing that greater than that money to someone else Mm. because then you're yeah you're finding value and that's something big for me something that i've like is my initial thoughts on it the that i've struggled in the past with is putting a value on my time yeah and not wasting it with frivolous things when i could be contributing somehow Mm -hmm. whether it's whether it's serving myself or serving others and that's the important way to discern it like you've got to like watching Netflix for an hour isn't serving anyone else but if it fills your cup and makes you feel good then that's a win right yeah totally so a a good friend he's he was very high up in a big company and his time is very precious obviously so he decided a nominal amount nominal amount that he was going to put on his time and if he could find someone else to do that task Mm -hmm. and pay them to do it he'd pay it because yeah. he found spending time with his family and kids was more important than mowing the lawn or yeah. doing something that wasn't actually adding value. Yeah. So he's like, if I can find someone to do it less than I value my time, why the hell am I not going to do that? 100%. So that's a really interesting way to think about it. Yeah. As like a very important, <laughs> we, it's not endless. Whereas like, yeah. not not that money is, but well, if, money is a scarce. Uh, sorry, time is a scarce resource. We only have a limited amount of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. We so can we can get t- money back. We can't you can, get time yeah, back, right? Yeah. Money can be and I think made and found and created on the like on the it goes quicker <clears throat> and it doesn't go quicker than you think. Like one of the concepts that <clears throat> um, back on relativity and Einstein. Here we go. One of, one of the con- <laughs> one of the con- one of the concepts that um, like blows my mind is that so remember when we were really young and how a year felt like forever? Yeah. You know, because it was you know when we're five, a year is twenty percent of our life. Yep. Right. Yeah. When we're I'm not good with math. When we're 20, <laughs> it's 5% of our life. Yeah, so... Good. Uh, uh, numbers. Uh, um, what about when we're 100? I don't know. It depends. Quick. Uh, <laughs> quick math. Quick math. Um, but so every year, like, regardless whether you want it or not, the year's going to feel like it goes quicker. Mm-hmm. So between... Like, I wish I could work out the math for this, but between, like, 10 and 20 will feel as long as between 10 and 40 right yeah. so yeah. if we're aware of that then every t- every second of every day every minute of every day we should be going I need to make sure that the time I spend is more valuable yeah. like that on that um, how much money is your, time is your money worth money is your time worth 
there's like the two things that take up so like take up I don't spend much time on it at the moment so it's um, something that I need to do better so that KP doesn't yell at me <laughs> but like things like washing and cleaning yeah it doesn't like it doesn't serve me I understand that yes that needs to be done <laughs> yeah but if I I would much rather like spend time like hanging out with KP or talking shit with you guys or working than doing those things so like I've looked in, I've looked into like outsourcing my laundry because I know that yeah. yep that's an hour or an hour and a half of the week or however long that I can't get back and I yeah, don't yeah. like it's not important to me yeah. um, rightly or wrongly it's just not something not that I value yeah. at yeah. all yeah. it's not a priority so you know you break the 168 hours down into 10,080 minutes 30, 30 to 40% of that you're going to spend sleeping like there's not that many minutes left and then once mm. we get rid of work and um, you know, time spent with friends and doing all the chores and stuff. You're not left with that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the thing that's helped me the most, like obviously the 168 hour rule, which we've talked about before, but if any of you guys at home want to do it, write 168 hours on a piece, 168 on a piece of paper, and then take away your sleep, take away your work, take away your sport, all of those things, and see how many hours you're left with. Um, that makes me be really intentional with my time. So. Yeah. Um, if I'm like I said before if I'm watching Netflix then I'm trying to be present where I'm yeah. watching Netflix and um, if I'm at work coaching I'm trying to be present while I'm coaching if I'm co- having a coffee with you guys I'm trying to be present and I think we get stuck in being in two or three places at once yeah, um, whether it be our heads off thinking about something else and we're on our phone and we're kind of half talking to someone mm-hmm. it's definitely like we all we all suck at it but it's yeah. something that I've been trying to be really anal about the last week and a half. Only the last week and a half because I watched a really cool TED talk about um, being where your feet are. Mm-hmm. So wherever cool. your feet are, that's where you are. Yeah. Um, that's being like being as effective as you can. Are you going to be more effective doing giving 100% of your effort and your attention to a single thing or yeah. are you going to be more effective giving 50% of yourself to two things? Yeah. Like, full, full ass one thing instead of half assing two things. Exactly. Full ass. One of them. Yeah. I went to a mm-hmm. seminar Good. recently, uh, we, uh, who was, which was run by uh, Mr. John DiMartini. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> he, um, he's a very interesting man. He essentially, I think he travels for 340 days of the year teaching people and wow. running seminars. So he only spent like two weeks at home, <laughs> which is wild. But his three things his, his life's purpose is to travel to teach and to, to research so he's either if he's not traveling as in the process of traveling he's either reading and researching things or he's teaching mm-hmm. he reckons he hasn't cooked a meal for like 30 years yep. <laughs> that's insane because that just that time is best spent yeah or, or more valuable doing other things that's yep. what will serve him mm-hmm. yeah and yep. that's serving him and that's serving yep. people around him he could spend an hour of his time cooking and preparing a meal, going shopping, or however long yeah. it takes. Yeah. But the value of that time is worth more than that. Yeah. It's pay fifty bucks to get a private chef or something <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that. Obviously, um, but he's he's built he's figured like, that he's, out. He's yes. figured it out, but it's not just something that he's would have just one day gone, I'm not gonna cook anymore, right? No. Yeah. It's something that it's he would conscious. have consciously mm. made a mm. plan around and executed on that plan. Like if I went home tonight and said, you know what, guys, I'm not going to cook anymore. You got, you guys are in charge. Um, dinner on the table by eight would be fantastic. <laughs> like, Tyler. Tyler, come on. Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Tacos. Then, like, that's – everyone's going to hate me, right? So, like, mm. it's something that maybe that's something I want to do and not never cook again, but maybe it's a three-year goal by the time mm. that, you know, when I'm at a certain income and I can mm. justify that mm-hmm. well, this much time, this is how much it's going to cost, I'm going to make this much for the other time. Yeah. It means that, yeah, I'm going to spend a couple more hours a yeah. week at things like that. You're, you're getting back hours of that 168 yeah. to do valuable things with. Yeah. And you're like cultivating your life around yeah. the things that serve you and serve others the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes you've got to, you've got to dive deep in, tip into the well before you actually start getting the water out. Like, yeah. I find myself at the moment, <clears throat> like, I'll get home and, I'll be I've spent 14, 15 hours at work or like I'll go straight from work to footy back to home and like KPL will be asleep and it's like fuck I've wasted the opportunity for a day and I'm in the mindset where ev- like ev- eventually is a, a difficult word but at some point I need that to pay me back and pay us back mm-hmm. um, otherwise I'm doing it for nothing Yeah. so 
you know, I'm trying to cultivate a life where that uh, extra time or that intentional time can be spread out. It's to, on its way. Yeah, it's on its way. And it's just like, I don't, but it, there's the not knowing, right? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, it's, it's how long does it take and how long do, you know, how much shit do we have to go through before we get to that point and, mm-hmm. you know, how much extra time are we actually going to get and is it just a, just a pipe dream that mm. may never happen I don't know mm. um, but I try and I've been trying to spend my days really intentionally to make sure that everything we do is moving mm. the needle so that we're clo- I'm closer than I was yesterday yep. um, which, mm. is, which is hard yeah right? that's a really cool thing that like, you are looking to try and get that two, three, four, five years down the track yeah. to get that stage where you've got more time for those important things I mean it is it's all sacrifices for the future, yeah, it's it's not just yeah. I want to be at work fourteen hours a day, fifteen yeah. hours a day. Yeah. I'm sure that's. And don't get me wrong. Some days I really enjoy being at work. And sometimes you have to. Some yeah, and some days I have to. But most of the time, I'd love to be at home at five o'clock to yeah. you mm-hmm. know to cook dinner and and sit down and like talk shit yeah. and enjoy each other's company rather than rather than being at work. But I don't like it's a it's a process to get there. It's not something we can just yeah, expect. Right. Yeah. And it's like same with Cooper Uni and. And diving into that, you're trying to figure out how you want to spend yeah. your week. Exactly. Spend it's not like doing that now. Yeah, and it's not like future. I would choose to travel an hour to uni and an hour back every day. Mm. I'm doing that to serve myself and to set myself up. It's part of the process to get to where I want to be, where yeah. I'm at a stage where I can dictate how I spend my time and how I, mm-hmm. where I work and what I spend my time doing. Yeah. Yeah necessary sacrifices mm. now for the future mm. yeah I like that yeah. one of the other things that Martini reckons is that he hadn't he I don't know if he said he can't drive or he just that was, <laughs> that's another thing he hasn't driven himself for like 30 years <laughs> so he just <laughs> gets an good. Uber all the time <laughs> <laughs> that's so good super interesting guy look him up he, but I um, think if you think about it like if you were not having to physically drive you could do things in the back of an Uber you could he be has, writing you could be yeah. reading he has be, meetings in, in the car mm-hmm. and he has <clears throat> He reads and he yeah. does things that again, yeah, maximize. Like yeah, we, we, can, we can do podcasts and right. things like that. But there's so many times where I want to like pull over and write a note from the podcast. So like, hey Siri, write this note, then I'll read it, read it later when <laughs> I pull no over, sense. and it makes no sense. Damn it! <laughs> Shut up, Siri. <laughs> hey Siri, thanks Siri. Um, a bit like yes. So yesterday I was actually talking to Grant Rogers about this. I was just like, ding. I was. I said um, just off the cuff because we had breakfast yesterday morning. I said. Um, I can't wait for self-driving cars. He's like, why? Because <laughs> he's a car guy, so he loves, loves the, the actual driving part. And I'm just like, I'm about to drive up to the city to see one of my best mates and you know, cultivate that relationship, but I've got an hour and 10 minutes to get there where mm. I've got to concentrate on the road and I want to try and listen to a podcast. <coughs> where if I had a self-driving car, then I could sit there and do some of our strategy stuff or I could mm. you know, create some content for, yeah. for the gym or I could you know, get back to my emails or... Otherwise, it's just dead time. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's a great example of how, how long... Think about how long you spend in your car getting to work or to mm. uni or to wherever. Yeah. And that time is... Yeah, unless you're using it in a way that you're growing and learning, like listening to a podcast or something, mm. then it's just dead time. Mm. Like, how much value is listening to shitty radio going yeah. to provide yeah. to your life? <laughs> yeah. And, and mm. if it's a mindless 20 minutes or half an hour that you think will make you feel better and will help yeah. fill your cup perfect yeah. if it's chucking on um, some Tommy 90s time. yeah chuck on Tommy Time playlist <laughs> um, get around it yeah. um, let's get him to double digits of followers on Spotify yes um, and just jam jamming out for half an hour then that yeah. might serve you like or just focusing on your breathing mm-hmm. yeah be mindful with your breathing and I think you'd be surprised at how much that serves you, how calm you feel and how much more value you get out of that time. Mm. And then you're actually moving, like, I, don't know, I, I use the term moving the needle, but it's just you're seeing an improvement. Mm. Um, like some people <coughs> come in, like come into a, a season of consolidation and they just want to stay where they are and mm. make sure that everything's going well. But for me and for you guys, like most of the time we're in that season of wanting to improve and wanting to figure out like some like it might be three months of personal growth and it might be three months of business growth and it might be three months of 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 helping cultivate and grow a community so Mm -hmm. there's always something different but 
if we are intentional with that time, um, then it's it's not wasted. Mm. Um, mm. No, I agree. You know, even if it's Xbox <clears throat> for twenty minutes, like. Well, I think we've talked about how we're using our time for ourselves. The other part would be to go away and think about how your time's valuable to someone else. Yeah. yeah. To go, an hour of my time is X, but to them it could mean so much more, yeah. either monetary or like time wise. Like, mm. just just trying to think about how valuable. <laughs> an hour for you could be to someone else like if you're exchanging a skill or knowledge or just or quality just time being there right like, quality time like yeah. it, it could be so valuable to someone else more than you think and I think we're very quick to go yeah but that's my hour like yeah. Yeah. think about the value on the other side like yeah how is this yeah he, we could be so willing to give up an hour in exchange for like something that could make someone's day or <laughs> really change something dramatic in their life yeah like it's well, a really it. good opportunity and, yeah, it only takes one conversation like we can it can take a lot more but sometimes it only takes one sentence and one conversation and one realisation to, to have with a friend or, yeah. or a partner or something that actually makes a really big difference like yep. um, one of the things that one of the girls VGT said to me the other day was talking about talking about like, just like cleaning your room and cleaning your house and stuff um, it was Kate she said only touch everything once yeah. and, and I was just like what do you mean she's like well don't double handle and so now rather than <laughs> getting my towel and throwing it on the floor and then dealing with it later, I don't double handle and I put it back <laughs> up. Like it's the little, like that's little a, things that's like really that. Cool. Yeah. And I'm like, um, after like have a shower and I've got my clothes from the day in a pile, I got into a habit maybe a month ago of leaving them in the bathroom and I'm like, oh, I'll put them in the laundry another day. So now like, I can hear her voice in my head and I'm just like, put it, <laughs> go put it in. Yeah, it's made a dramatic it's, impact it's on sentence, you. right? Or it's like that um, mantra around the sandwich you walk past the sandwich you accept. I That's in my head all the time. I can't right? walk past a piece of rubbish on the ground now without picking it up. Yeah. Like I realized I did it yesterday without even thinking. Yeah. And you know, there's one um, HSP box that's no longer in, in circulation because it's in a bin, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. The world's a better place. Like yeah. it's just those little things. Yeah. Um, awesome. So before we get stuck in the next episode, we're gonna have a week off. We'll see you guys next week. If you've enjoyed this kind of episode, please let us know. Um, if you've got questions or topics or that kind of thing that you want us to talk about, throw them at us. Cheers to you. Be amazing. Thank you.